like the tutorial about tracing raster images, this tutorial will also deal with drawings revolving around MBRDB's Plot 12 house. In this case, the section and the plans have already been drawn. Um, we will prep these drawings for exporting from AutoCAD and importing into Rhino so that you can then uh, use these drawings to build up a 3D model. First, uh, save a copy. Um, and so the first thing you want to do is delete any XREFs you may have included in this file. So in this case, uh, if I turn on my image layer, you can see the two raster images that, that I uh, traced over in this file. So I can go ahead and delete them here, but what you also need to do is open the reference manager and remove those attachments. So you can see they're still here. It can't find them because I've deleted them, but the information is in the links are still here. So that's just unnecessary information in this file that we do not want to bring into uh, Rhino. So I'll right click on them and click detach. Um, this is the file we're in, so there's basically nothing else attached to this file. And close that. The next step is to delete any kind of unnecessary line work. Anything in this file you may not need. For instance, uh, this floor pattern. That kind of stuff you can render in Rhino. Other things like hatches, we do not want either. Um, and any, any dimensions or text or just any information that really won't provide any use in Rhino. Um, you really want to minimize the, the number of lines that you bring in. So what I'm going to do is find the layer that my floor pattern's on. Okay, it says A floor pat. So I can actually right click and use this quick select option. And within this dialog box, um, I can choose what I want to select. Different, different types of of line work or objects within the file. I'm going to keep uh, multiple set. I want it to search the entire drawing. That's fine. The properties I want, I want to search by layer. So then I can go down to the value here and find that A floor pat layer and then click OK. And basically it will select everything on that layer. And if I've organized my layers properly and cleanly, then when I delete when I hit delete, the only thing that was deleted was pattern, floor pattern information that I uh, don't need for Rhino. I can also use the quick select command to select all the hatches. Um, so if I right click and I go down to quick select, instead of searching by layer or selecting by layer, which I could if, I, if I'm sure all my hatches are on a single layer, but this time it's easier to just change the object type to hatch and then color and because it's set to by layer I basically know that it's going to select all my hatches because all of my lines are always set to uh, color by layer so I'll say OK and now you can see all my hatches have been selected and I can delete those Next we need to simplify our layer structure. Currently I have uh, a number of layers in this file, but when you import line work into Rhino, it brings with it all the layers of that line work. So it's best to kind of simplify it as best we can um, and, and do that in a way that will benefit our construction in Rhino. So I'm going to create five new layers, four for the four floor plans and one for the section.
And I'm going to assign different colors to each of those just so that it's easier to visualize them uh, once they're uh, imported into Rhino. So I can close my layer manager. Now I'm basically just going to go through and select uh, the line work by by floor, and then reassign it here uh, to those layers I just created. And so now that I have all my layers kind of cleanly organized, what I need to do is purge all of the unnecessary information kind of hiding in the background of this file. Things like uh, uh, extra layers, um, dimension styles, basically just want to get this file as small as possible and uh, confuse Rhino as little as possible. So I will type purge. And then this dialog basically brings up a list of all the things that I can, uh, unnecessary things still in the file. All these layers, um, annotation styles, line types, text styles. And so what I'm going to do is basically just tell it to purge everything. And then close. So this file should be pretty clean and ready to go. So the last thing I need to do is save it. Um, there's a good chance that I can just hit save and Rhino won't have any problem with it, but depending on what version of AutoCAD you're using, you may need to save as a, a older version or a legacy version of AutoCAD. So we can, just to be sure, I can go to save as, and I'll just save over that Rhino file, uh, the, the copy I made earlier, but down here under file type, um, I can scroll through and set it to an older version of DWG. You're going to be pretty safe with 2000, 2004 um, importing into Rhino 4 or Rhino 5. So say OK. Say yes. And then we're ready to go. Um, next thing you need to do is then import that into Rhino. So I will close this file open Rhino and first check that our units match our AutoCAD file. So under tools go down to options and then in document properties there is units and you can see here our model units are set to millimeters so we say OK and then import our AutoCAD file. Um, we were pretty diligent about cleaning up our file, but it's best just to turn off all these import unreferenced layers, unreferenced blocks, unreferenced line types. Uh, chances are those are things that you don't want or didn't even know were there. Just double check that our units are millimeters, say OK. And then we bring it in, and there's our uh, AutoCAD line work now in Rhino. And you can see over here, we now have the five layers also added to our Rhino file. Um, and we can toggle those on and off individually based on which floor we're working with. And so once once you have your your AutoCAD line work in Rhino, you can basically then begin to align and uh, arrange it so that it makes it easier to uh, build up your 3D model. And so in this case, I would want to fold my section up so that I can then align each of these floors with the floor plates in the section. So I will select that section, type rotate, and then snap to my base point where I want to rotate around. Uh, currently it's only letting me rotate in plan view. But I'm going to switch to the side view 
and then rotate it vertically 90 degrees. So now my section is vertical and then I can align my plans by floor with that section. So I will go ahead and start, start with the fourth floor and type move snap to the corner point of this wall and then find the equivalent location in the section and I'm just going to do this for each floor Of course, you don't have to uh, construct your model this way. You could build each floor individually and then move them into place uh, later. This is just the way I would do it personally. And there you go. You can already start to see the house kind of taking shape in 3D.